so now this is just showing those rays. So this green, this green dot is your gaze point. Uh, the rays coming in parallel to that get focused to a point in the center of your uh, fovea. This red dot is uh, a peripheral point. Those rays are coming in at an angle. They get focused to a different point on your fovea. The size of your pupil controls how bright the image is. So if uh, your pupil is small, uh, you, see the two, you see the two points, but they may be a little dimmer. If your pupil gets bigger, it lets in more light rays and it gets brighter. So the pupil size changes how bright everything is because it changes how many rays get in, but it doesn't change the image that you see. You still see the same two points and you see them with the same visual acuity that you would whether your pupil is large or small. Now, back, so now we've covered how you see. So um, I hope that that doesn't belittle visual science, but this is, this is enough of how you see that is relevant for this discussion. So how does an AR contact lens work? Uh, well, you, you first start with the world's tiniest display. So in May of last year, Mojo announced the 14,000 pixel per inch display, which is the world's densest display or at least it was at that time. Uh, so you can see on the left, here's a ladybug. Uh, and this is to scale an actual, uh, an actual Mojo display chip. Um, the actual lit up area is less than half a millimeter across. But when you look at it under a microscope, you can see what's on the right here, which is a nice picture of Albert Einstein. And the pixels are 1.8 microns apart. Um, so when we think about what that means, we can compare it to a red blood cell, human red blood cells, seven microns across, which means that 14 Mojo display pixels would fit on that one red blood cell. Um, so this just gives you an idea of the scale. So that's great. We have a, a really, really tiny display, but where can we put it? Well, we need to put it someplace where the light from the display can go through the pupil so you can see it. But the display itself has to be invisible. It can't block your vision. It can't create a black blind spot right in the middle of your vision. Uh, and the display can't impact your visual acuity. If you have 20, you know, you, you need to see the world with 20-20 vision because most of the time, frankly, the display is probably going to be off. You're going to be wearing this contact lens all day. Uh, you want to be able to see clearly. So where can we put that display? Well, it turns out, as long as the display is a lot smaller than the pupil, we can put it right in front of the pupil. So as you see here, um, if we put it in front of the pupil, obviously the light coming out of the display will go through the pupil because it's sitting right in the middle of it. Um, but look at what you're seeing. It's It's Yes, it's blocking some rays at the center of the pupil, but most of the light rays are still going through the pupil and they're still focusing to exactly those same two points. So you're seeing exactly the same image that you were seeing before, only it's, it's slightly dimmer. And how much dimmer will depend on what fraction of the pupil area you're blocking with the display. So it, just as an example, let's suppose that the the display was a millimeter in diameter, and you put it right in front of a three millimeter diameter pupil. It's gonna block one ninth of the light, which is 11%. Your pupil were four millimeters, you'd block 6%. If your pupil were five millimeters, you'd only block 4%. Um, so that's really the effect of putting the display in front of the pupil. It's, it's, it's equivalent to replacing all your 100 watt light bulbs in your room with a 95 watt light bulb. Um, or you could compare it to a, a pair of uncoated glasses, which are gonna reflect about 8% of the light, dimming the world by 8%. Uh, so the truth is that it's actually not noticeable. Uh, you, can, you can wear this thing in front of your pupil all day long, and you will, you will experience normal vision. 